We stand for the right of people to live free of tyranny. But we stand for the defense of democracy. For such defense matters to us because it keeps peace. The United States, together with our allies and partners around the world, will continue to stand with the brave people of Ukraine as they defend their sovereignty. We stand with Israel. We stand with Israel. When the US president stands by his allies, he's essentially making a pledge on behalf of the country that must be paid for by the American taxpayer. And boy, do they pay. Under Joe Biden, the annual defense budget has swollen to a record $886 billion. That's about $2,500 for every man, woman, and child in America. Now, about half the US defense budget goes to maintaining the US military, paying the salaries of soldiers and other expenses. The other half is spent buying weapons and services from private companies like Lockheed Martin, RTX, Boeing, General Dynamics, and Northrop Grumman. These are the so-called Big Five US defense manufacturers who get the lion's share of government contracts. They make fighter jets, armored vehicles, drones, and other types of weapons and equipment, including the key components for Israel's missile defense system, the Iron Dome. We're surging additional military assistance, including ammunition and interceptors to replenish Iron Dome. We're going to make sure that Israel does not run out of these critical assets. The U.S. defense sector as a whole receives over $400 billion a year from the U.S. government and manages to sell another $200 billion worth of weapons to other countries. These companies are so profitable that they can afford to pay their CEOs well over $20 million a year. They can also afford to hire lobbyists, lots of them. According to one report, the entire defense sector employs about 700 of them, which is more than one per member of Congress. About three quarters of these lobbyists once worked for the federal government and are nicknamed revolvers for reasons best explained by Senator Elizabeth Warren, who's very suspicious of the entire sector. So right now they have built this great revolving door between the Department of Defense and the big contractors. And they want that revolving door to keep spinning because it helps them with their profits. And with those profits, they can afford to donate millions of dollars to members of Congress. These are the top 10 recipients. Republicans in red, Democrats in blue, roughly an even split. Chuck Schumer, as the Senate Majority Leader, may well be the most influential, but they're all important because they all have one vote. And as they say in Washington, the president proposes, Congress disposes. In other words, Biden may ask for a massive defense budget, but it's Congress that votes to decide how big that budget is. In Chuck Schumer, the president has a powerful ally. The Democrat senator not only receives campaign donations from the arms industry, he also takes donations from pro-Israel groups. And so it's no surprise the senator flew to Israel one week after Hamas attacked to reassure the Israelis they'd receive yet more military support. We will work with the Israeli government and the Biden administration to assemble the most generous package possible. Now the people will ask, what about the House? We're not waiting for the House. Of course, the package that Chuck Schumer supports for Israel comes on top of the annual $3.8 billion America gives to Israel every year to spend on US weapons. Some of the money will almost certainly end up with the Big Five, and investors are excited about this. They anticipate the war with Gaza will be profitable. Just look at the company's share prices. Ever since Hamas attacked Israel on October the 7th, four out of five of them have risen sharply, which is good news for shareholders, including big names like State Street, BlackRock, and Vanguard. It all goes to prove the adage that war is good for business. No one made that point more powerfully than President Dwight Eisenhower in his prophetic farewell address to the nation. This conjunction of an immense military establishment and a large arms industry is new in the American experience. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex.